See, this is one of these videos that I like, I have to use some sort of clickbaity title. And I, that annoys me because this is some information. This is a topic that I think a lot of people will get something out of. And I get asked constantly about this. But if I just put 48K versus 96K, no one's going to watch this video. The state of YouTube frustrates me just a little bit with the clickbaitiness. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between 48K and 96K and why I never use one of them. Hey everyone, I'm Cool Caparoon. Thank you for stopping by for another video. Okay, a little backstory. For those of you that don't know, you gotta see this. For those of you that don't know, I have this running list of video ideas and it is forever long. And some of these video ideas have been on this note for since I started this channel. And some of them are really hard to figure out how to present. So four or five years ago, I started this experiment where I wanted to do a video on 48K versus 96K. And the idea was I was going to track two songs, <clears throat> one of them at 48K and one of them at 96K. And I was going to get all the way through the entire process. And then once we were done, I was going to analyze the difference between them and show it on video. And there's footage. I still have some of the footage of, of like the drum session uh, tracked with Lester Estelle, which you guys know. And we, we tracked both songs in exactly the same drum session using exactly the same drums and the same microphones and the same settings and everything. And what happened is we got all the way through these songs and I realized that I couldn't even make the video. There wasn't a way to present it in the way that I, th I thought I would just play both songs for you guys and it would be perfectly obvious which was which and you could come to your own conclusions. And the issue is the song being in the different key and the song being like it, with different guitars on it and the song being like different singers on it and the song being different arrangements and different tempos. And there was so much about it that made it just not an apples to apples comparison that I ended up throwing in the towel on the whole experiment because there's just there's too much different, but I do still have all of my notes from those sessions. I still remember exactly everything that happened. And so what I want to do today, sorry, that was a really long intro. What I want to do today is just kind of discuss the differences because there are pros and cons to both. However, there's only one that I use. So let's just jump right into it. Now, the very first thing that both me and Lester noticed in the drum session is that the accuracy of 96K, it, it felt more accurate. It felt more true to what was actually happening. Um, the transience of the drums felt more accurate. I guess that's the only way that I can put it. For those of you that don't know, I guess I should describe what, or I should explain what both of them are. This sample rate, when we're recording, doesn't matter what DAW you're using, doesn't matter what interfaces you're using, basically it's a snapshot and how many snapshots there are per second of the waveform. So a, a traditional waveform goes like this and the computer, the interface, takes a snapshot of it, a bunch of snapshots. So like the wave does this, I don't even know how to describe this, and there's a bunch of snapshots as it's like going through the curve. How many times per second it takes a snapshot of that waveform, this is the sample rate. 48K is 48,000 snapshots per second, 96K is 96,000 snapshots per second. It's generally what you can, uh, how you can think about this stuff. So what was really interesting is that both of us agreed that hands down that the drums sounded more accurate and more realistic, I guess, maybe at 96K. However, both of us, hands down, preferred 48K. There was like no comparison. And what is interesting is that kept happening throughout the process on the 96K song. I kept recording stuff and I'm like, oh, those guitars sound more clinical, more accurate, more, I don't even know how to put it into words, but I preferred them less. Uh, the vocal sounded more uh, like you're listening to a singer rather than listening to a recording of a singer, but I preferred it less. And this just kept happening and happening. Now there were some pros to 96K, so let me get through those and then we'll talk about the cons. 
if you can't tell by now, I only record in 48K. I already did a whole video why I don't record in 41K. I'll link it down below. I don't record in 96K, and I'll get to the cons as to why in a minute. The pros of 96K are the accuracy. Uh, if I was doing orchestral stuff, um, or maybe even some bluegrass stuff, I would be more inclined to go 96K. The other pro is elastic audio. When you're stretching and pulling stuff, or when you're tuning vocals, or that sort of thing, it does sound better at 96K. If I'm using elastic audio to, to like pocket drums or to stretch a note on a vocal or something, it, it does sound noticeably better doing that at 96K. That is really all the pros that I can come up with, but there is quite a list of cons. So first up, the processing power is so much more. Like you would think it would just be double, but and I should have run a test actually, it's, it didn't feel like just double. It felt like once you get into mixing especially, and you start stacking plugins up, you know, you figure that like the track is double the sample rate. And so then if you put one plug in on it, I'm not sure that this is exactly how this would add up, but then you put one plug in on it and the processing power of that one plug in is double or near double. And then you put two plugins on it and each instance of a plugin is double or near double. And so you end up with what felt like to me by how slow the computer was when I was running these experiments, what felt like to me is by the end of a mix, it was, I don't know, three times, maybe four times more CPU intensive than running at 48K. And and there wasn't a sonic improvement to me. I actually liked the 48K better. And so this was a huge trade-off. Uh, the other huge con is storage space. The sessions would end up being nearly double the size in storage. And so that's a huge trade-off in buying hard drives. And I'm someone who keeps every single session. I have every session I've ever done. Now, half of them I can't even open because the systems are have moved on and I would have to source the old gear in order to even open them. However, I still have everything I've ever done. Uh, and that archival cost gets pretty extreme when you're doubling the size of everything. And it's, it's quite extreme anyway to begin with. Anyway, so that is also part of it. The clinicalness of 96K, or the accuracy, I guess, is the, is the positive spin on it. This is also a con to me because there's, like, there's less vibe this a, it's a weird thing to quantify. It's hard to put into words. But in the same way that tape absolutely is coloring and changing things and it's affecting and processing everything, I feel the same way about 48K versus 96K that there's a, there's a sw sweetness is the wrong word, but there's a, a crunchiness or an aggressiveness that 48K gives. I really wish that I could have figured out how to put this into examples for you guys to hear. I would encourage you to run your own experiments and try to figure out how you can experiment with this yourself. Um, at the end of the day, I wanted to get this info out there. I wanted to make this video, and I wish it would have been more in-depth A-B tests and giving you guys sonic examples, and I just, there just wasn't a way to really do that. If you can figure out a way to do that and show it off in a convincing way, please tag me when you post your video. Now, another pro of 96K, in my opinion, would be capturing the accuracy or uh, ex more exactly what analog hardware is doing. When you're mixing with analog hardware, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there. There's color from the transformers. There's just everything that happens in the, in the hardware domain. When your interface is running at 96K, you're more accurately capturing what's happening in the analog domain. So that is technically a pro. However, that pro is a wash to me when it comes to the sonic character of the recordings because 96K does sound too clinical to me on most things. Now, something I haven't experimented with because it just seems like more work than is worth it is if you're someone who really does a lot of time stretching or a lot of processing in that way, uh, lots of tuning, drastic tuning or drastic time stretching, I think there might be something to record in 96K, make those changes and then process it down to 48K. I'm not 
convinced because I did try that with the song I recorded at, at 96K. I ended up, once it was all done, I saved as a 48K version. And it didn't feel the same to me. It felt like it was halfway between recording at 48K and 96. It felt like it moved it in the 48K direction, but it didn't all the way get there in terms of like the feel and the vibe of it. This is all really, really nuanced. This is something that, I mean, I think the vast majority of people probably can't even hear the difference anyway. And then there's the whole argument that, you know, we, we're going to do all this and people are going to stream an MP3 through $20 earbuds. There are links down below for every piece of gear that I use. Uh, those links do go to Sweetwater. Anytime you guys need any piece of musical gear, jump on any one of my videos, click on any one of the links in the description below. And once you're on Sweetwater's website, you can purchase anything that you were gonna buy anyway. Anything that you need costs you nothing extra and doing that really goes a long ways to help support this channel and help me keep making videos just like this one. So thank you guys for clicking on those links when you need to purchase anything. And thank you Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. This is my take on it, 48K versus 96K. Uh, I hope it was informative. What I want to do with these videos is get your wheels turning and hopefully inspire you to make some experiments yourself, to do some experimenting and decide for you what works best for you. That is going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, drop comments, and let me know what you think. I'm curious uh, because this does seem to be kind of a hotly debated topic, but thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.